Live, alive, 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 alive. Could it be? Yes, YouTube says we're live. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from New York. My name is Michael. I am an English teacher here in New York, and I am so glad to be here on YouTube. iTube, YouTube. Everyone tubes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> That's a bad joke. Uh, good morning to Stacy, Lolly, Lolly, Nikki, Yumino, and David. Thanks for joining me today. Um, today we're going to talk about phrasal verbs for your daily life, and we're going to talk about 32 of them. And I hope this will be helpful for you. I'm trying out a new technology here, too. Da -da -da -da! Now go hi. Mie, hello. Hello, David. Hi, thank you for joining me today. Um, if this is your first time, let me know where you're from. I'd like to know that. If this is not your first time, welcome back. Hello, Tammy. I'd like to say thank you to Tammy and everyone else in Canada for sending the cold air down to New York this morning. Much appreciated. <laughs> it's very sunny, but it's, the wind is really cold. What? What do you need? Come here. Come and say hello to the people. The dogs need attention all the time. Look, there he is. Hello, Max. That's Max. Oh, hi. What do you want? You want to study English? Oh, I'm okay. All right, buddy. See ya. Go downstairs. Uh, Max always wants to be part of the action. Come here. Come here. All right, then go. Then don't. Come here. Come here. I, I, I can't. I'm talking to these guys. Oh, go see. Go see, Eloy. Go. Uh, you know, she's... Uh, He's, he's very needy. Go go down, go downstairs. I have nothing for you. Want this? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Max wants his, his collection of, of bones. Okay, he can. Every dog needs a bone. Okay. All right. Now that we've settled that problem, welcome. Uh, Stacy from South Korea. Hi, welcome. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, they are cute. Maria from Okinawa. Hi. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about... <laughs> Phrasal verbs. That's right. That's right. But before we do that, I have a question. Sam, me. Hi. Here's my question to you. Uh, today is Monday. Today is Monday. So let's talk about last this past weekend. Did you study English? If you did, what did you learn? Did you learn some new vocabulary? Maybe new grammar? What did you learn this weekend? Let me know in the in the comments. Um, I'd like to see your new vocabulary or your new idiom. Um, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. I finished, I finally finished reading my story. I'm st My second language is Japanese. Complacent. We need a sentence, Tammy. Angst. Give us a sentence. Um, I'm learning, uh, I, I'm, I'm studying Japanese reading and writing by, um, by, with, with, a, with a book, and it has some old stories, and I finally finished the Casa Jizo over the weekend. Oof, that was tough. There was a lot of new kanji for me that I didn't know, like the kanji for bimbo. My God. That's okay. Still practicing. I'm ashamed. I didn't study English. Lolly, lolly. Oh my God. You have to make up for it today. Hangry. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, all right. By the way, does anybody have an English question? We need to keep working hard and try to avoid being complacent, good. I like that example. 
Keep working hard. That's what Michael's trying to do. I keep working hard. Work, work, work. Vocabulary about nature. Excellent. If you happen to watch some YouTube video in English or look at social media in English, that's also studying. It doesn't mean studying and learning doesn't mean you have to sit at a desk all the time. So that's good. Um, Tammy's example, hangry. I am hangry. Hungry plus angry at the same time. So if somebody's in a bad mood because he didn't eat, you could say he's hangry. Um, Jeffard, hi. Jeffard, hi. Evgen. An audiobook, Tom Sawyer. Some of Tom Sawyer's uh, language is very racist for the 21st century. Um, yada, yada, yada. That's hard to explain. What does that mean? How do we use that? I watch Friends. Excellent. Do you know Lives in a Box? I'll put that in the comments. If you go to Google and you type in lives in a box friends, you will find a website that has the um, uh, the transcript for every, every program, every episode. I set on a trip or I set on studying. Set on studying works better because it's an ING. Greetings from Brazil. Hello, Wilson. Whenever, whatever, whoever, good. Um, I want to know how I can use for like, don't you, didn't you, isn't it? Also, isn't it? Don't you? Don't you like that? Okay, that's a good idea. Maria, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a note of that. You should study that. Don't you? Didn't you? All right, good. Thank you, thank you. Um, does that mean living in a tight space? Oh, sorry. Lives in a Box is a website. I put that in the comments. Lives in a Box, It's if you type that into Google, you'll find a website which called Lives in a Box. I don't know why it's called that. Um, but they have a transcript of every single Friends episode. Um, and it's free. You can You can check it out. There are a lot of American TV programs, maybe British, I don't know. I don't follow British TV programs. There are a lot of American TV programs that you can find the script online. The script is like the subtitles, but it's written like a story. And so the dialogue, if you will. And all you have to do is you type in, for example, what's your favorite TV program? Modern Family, you type in the search engine, Modern Family Script, or Modern Family Season 1 Script, or Sex in the City Season 1 Script, or uh, Big Bang Theory Season 1 Script, or Breaking Bad Season 1 Script. Whatever TV program you like, if you type in the name of the program, Season 1 Script, S-C-R-I-P-T, you'll find... I'm sure you'll find one, at least one, if not many websites that have the transcript right there. And that's a really great study guide. I wish that when I studied Japanese 30 years ago, when I started studying Japanese 30 years ago, I wish I had this kind of technology. You are so lucky, so lucky, so lucky, so lucky. One California person told me they don't use set on, it's used in the UK. We set out, we set on a trip. Yeah, that probably does sound British English. Yeah. Yeah. Set out on a trip. It sounds like something you would, um, that you would read in a novel. We set out on our journey. We set out on our journey. That sounds very novelish. 
All right. So, I promised you 32 phrasal verbs, and I will not disappoint. Oh, my God. That's huge. Just a moment. Uh-oh. That's huge. That is too huge. Just a moment. There we go. All right. <laughs> Much better. All right. So, here we go. Um, we're going to do this quiz style. I usually get blank at 6.30 a.m., but today I slept blank and woke up at 7. What's your answer? Get up, sleep in. Get up. Let's talk about get up. What time did you get up today? What time did you get up today? Give me a sentence. What time did you get up today? We're going to start very, you might think, oh, Michael, this is so easy. Yes, it is easy. We're going to start easy and then we will build. What time did you get up today? I got up at 6.30. Thank you for a complete sentence. I got up at 7.20. I got up at 5.30. I got up at 6. Perfect. Excellent. Elena, hi. I got up at 7.30. I get up at 7 o'clock. I get up at 6 a.m. Okay, good. I want to ask you about sleep in. I, oh, I can't. Sleep. I don't know if I can do that. Um, no? No, I can't. Okay. Sleep in. What does sleep in mean? And I should say, what's the difference between sleep in and oversleep? I got up. You mean, no, I got up at 5.30. We need up. Um, so, sleep in. What is the difference between sleep in and oversleep? If I'm sick, I always sleep in a lot. What does that mean, sleep in? I usually sleep in at the weekend. I want to sleep in tomorrow. Sleep in until late in the morning. Sleep in is intentional. Thank you. That's right. If you sleep in, that's your plan. If you oversleep, that's an accident. Let me repeat that. Oversleep is an accident. Sleep in is intentional. It's your plan. I sleep I slept in until around 11 p.m. 11 p.m. I think you mean 11 a.m. Um, a lot of people like to sleep in on their day off. Okay. You can sleep in on your day off. All right. That's two. Good. So just a moment. Uh, all right. Hmm? Why? Why is that not working? Okay. There we go. All right. After that, I took mm -hmm, my pajamas and I put mm -hmm, my clothes. Well, that's mean if I sleep well until seven. Right. Right. When you sleep in, it's your plan. And then when you uh, uh, oversleep, that's an accident. I took off my pajamas and put on my clothes. Right. Put on. Keep in mind, I know this is very easy. You're thinking, oh, Michael, this is too easy. Don't worry. We're going to get there. Keep in mind, all right, that um, put on is an action. I put on my glasses. I take off my glasses. It's an action. I put on my glasses, I take off my glasses. That's an action. But I usually wear my glasses when I'm driving. Mm. Okay, so wear is a state. Put on and take off is an action. Uh, Tammy says, I put away my clothes. Okay, that's fine. 
But uh, usually in the morning you want to put on your clothes. But put away is okay too. All right. Very, very easy. They said, Michael, this is too easy. All right. Then I washed <laughs> and headed <laughs> the kitchen. I washed. <laughs> you think about that. I'm going to go open the window for a moment. See how I did that? I went this way, and then I went that way. Okay, so I washed. Tammy says, wash up and head it into the kitchen. Anybody have a different idea? I'm not saying that that's wrong. Washed up, up to, headed to the kitchen. I like that too. Wash up. Wash up. Um, in this context, Who's the king? Context. In this context, wash up means, you know, what you do in the morning. You brush your teeth, you wash your face, you make your hair stand up. <laughs> um, so it's wash up, wash up. And head, you can head to a place if it's a room, you can say, I headed into the kitchen. Head into the kitchen. Let's head into the living room and watch TV. Let's head into the dining room and have dinner. Um, I put in my contacts every morning. Oh, lolly lolly. Thank you. I almost forgot to say that. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, I mentioned uh, here in, in, num in, in number two, <laughs> sorry, um, that uh, I put on my clothes, right? Put on, take off, put on, take off. We use put on and take off for everything. You put on your socks, you put on your jeans, you put on your shoes, you put on your hat. You put on your watch. I say you you put on your watch. You put on your oh, I don't know, you put on your glasses. You put on your you put on your makeup. Put on your hat, put on your belt. Everything is put on except contact lenses. That's the special case. So you put in your contact lenses and then you take out your contact lenses at the end of the day. Put in, take out your contact lenses. Everything else that is on your body, we use put on and take off. Okay? Lolly, thanks for mentioning that. All right. Okay, so... Put on perfume. That's right. Everything is put on. Put on makeup. Put on lipstick. Put on your earrings. Put on your necklace. Put on your watch. Put on your hat. Everything is put on except contact lenses. If you wear contact lenses, you put your contact lenses in and then you take them out. Nako. Nikoningen. Nikoningen. Hello from Japan, Nikoningen. Welcome. Um, and then uh, wash up, right? You wash up. You, you, you wash your face, brush your teeth, make your hair stand up. And then you head to the kitchen or head into the kitchen. Both are okay. All right. Put on my best smile. Oh, thank you. Put on your best smile for this class. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Let's see, make that bigger. A little bit. Oh, too big. Okay, sorry. All right. 
And then, this is a story, by the way. This is Michael's morning. I turned the coffee maker and then made breakfast. How about you? Lolly Lolly says on, turn on, turn on. That's easy, right? Uh, you turn on a machine. Toshi, hi, welcome. So, what is the first thing? Oops, I'm pointing. You can't see me pointing. What is the first thing that you turn on? What's the first thing you turn on in the morning? What is the first thing that you turn on in the morning? What is the first thing that you turn on in the morning? I turn on the coffee maker. David says the phone. I put on my best behavior. Every time you see my mother-in-law. My phone. Turn on my phone. I turn on the light in winter. I turn on my phone. The light. Maria. Coffee maker. All right. I'm with you. Turn on the TV. Ooh. I hope you don't turn on the news. Maybe you turn on Radio Taiso. Turn on the hair iron. Yes, I turn on the hair iron, too, because I like to curl my hair. Hello, Daniela from Chile. Turn on the water boiler. Wow. Um, all right. So far, so good. Turn on. By the way, the opposite is turn off. You know that. Oh, this is easy, man. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. It takes me uh, it takes me a long time to do my hair. Um, about three seconds. <laughs> All right. I opened the fridge. I opened the fridge and I took blah, blah, two eggs and some butter. I opened the fridge and took two eggs and some butter. Stacy says out. Took out. Mie out. Eugene, I'm out, out, out. Good. Uh, took out. Easy, right? What did you take out of the refrigerator this morning? Maria, sorry. Out. Out is the winner. I took out two eggs. Take out means remove something. You, you take something out, you, um, you remove it. So what did you take out of the fridge? I took out water. Eugenio, thank you for a full sentence. I took out my packed lunch this morning. All right. I took out some milk. Good examples. Remember, the best way to remember vocabulary, write a sentence that's true for you, and then memorize your sentences. I took out some fruit. I took out boiled eggs. I took out a milk. I took out some milk works better. I took out an apple. Healthy. Awesome. Excellent, excellent. All right. We're doing, we're, we're, we're cruising here. That's good. That is good. All right. I took out some drink. I took out bread and jam. That's jam. Over the weekend, I went to a Greek grocery store and I bought baklava, which is a very delicious, yummy dessert. And the owner, it's a very small, you know, one owner, little mom and pop shop. And the owner gave me um, a jar of uh, natural, uh, organic peach jam. Oh, my God, it was so good. All right. I wanted to have scrambled eggs. I put some butter in the frying pan and cooked the eggs. On. Into. Some people say on. Lolly says into. Put some butter into the fry pan. On to Stacy.
Okay, Nicolene again. So put some butter into, put into, put into, put some butter into the frying pan. Mika, hi. Put, um, put the, put the eggs into the fry pan. Put the butter into the fry pan. Okay, put something into. And I know what you're thinking. You might be thinking, but you know, the fry pan is flat and I put the, the butter on the fry pan, onto the fry pan. But into works better because usually a fry pan has a wall on the side, right? I'm trying to make a, a fry pan, right? It's, there's a wall on the side. It's high. And so it's, it's inside the frying pan. So the answer is, I wanted to have some scrambled eggs and I put some butter into the fry pan into the fry pan. You could say in. I put butter in the fry pan or into. Okay? Everybody cool? Nako, you good? Into. Actually, this morning I did not have scrambled eggs. I had fried eggs. But, you know, close enough. Um, recently, recently, did you put something into a frying pan? Did you put something into a frying pan? Did you put some coffee into your cup? Did you put coffee into your cup? I'm going to put coffee into my cup. Put the coffee or pour the coffee into my cup. And now you know why Michael is always drinking coffee and his coffee is never empty. <laughs> Spare. Hello. Um, Stacy, Toshi, thank you so much. Stacy, do you know that brand? Is that a popular brand in, in South Korea? Um, because I bought this, I bought this at a, at a Korean, a Korean grocery store. I put coffee into my cup. I put green tea in my cup. That's healthy. Into the fry pan, pork chops. Always something into something for my kids. Cups and bowls. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so on. Nice super chat. Um, I put two pieces of pork chops into my frying pan this morning. Wow. For breakfast. Excellent. All right. Good. So that's put some butter into the fry pan is the answer. Okay, when they were done, I'm talking about the eggs. This is a continuous story. I put some cream into my coffee. Nice. I put a lot of veggies and meat to make a stir fry into the fry pan. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. How come we always talk about food here? Hmm? Why is that? <laughs> ah, that explains why Michael is fat. I put some butter into the fry pan to make some pancakes. That's, uh, Stacy, that's what I made yesterday. That's what I made yesterday. All right. When they were done, the eggs, I put them hmm, hmm, a plate. I put them on a plate or onto a plate? Onto, on, both okay. Put something on something. I put, I put my glasses... On my head. Sorry, going out. My sleepy time. Okay, good night. Oyasumi nasai. Thank you for coming today. Um, I put them onto a plate. I put them onto a plate. All right, very good. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We are foodies, right? That's for sure. I'm sorry if you're a fan of sports. 
Um, we don't talk about sports much in this live lesson. I put my phone into my bag before going out. Good. All right. Oh, yes, I mean, I keep the code today. Thank you for coming today. Um, put them on a plate. On, Elena, on works better because the plate is flat and they're on the plate. All right. In the interest of time, I'm going to move quickly today. This is Michael. I was so hungry that I ate, hmm, everything in five minutes. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What's your guess? I was so hungry that I ate. Okay, we have two votes, three votes for up. Eight up, eight up, eight up. Four votes for up, eight up. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Eight up everything. Okay, good. So, it's sometimes difficult to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's sometimes difficult to understand the meaning of prepositions. But here's one that's easy to catch. We sometimes use up after a verb, and it means do that completely. So you, if you have kids, you tell your kids, eat up your vegetables, right? Eat up your vegetables. Or you're, you're at the bar with your friends, drink up. Drink everything. Or when you're a child, your mother says, clean up your room. You better clean up your room. Okay? You have to finish up your homework. So sometimes up after a verb means do that thing completely. So... Um, Finish up your homework, finish it completely. Drink up your drink, do it completely. Eat up your vegetables, eat everything. Clean up your room, completely clean your room. Okay? Sorry, I got to close the window now because the wind is too much. Hi, I'm back. Um, so that's, that's about up, finish up. All right. I hope we can finish up everything here today. Um, okay. So I was so hungry that I ate up everything in five minutes. All right. Here's three phrasal verbs in one sentence. I got blank from the table and started to clean blank. I did the dishes and then put everything blank. Thank you, Jose. All right, so what do you think? I got hmm from the table. I started to clean hmm. I did the dishes and put everything hmm. So you have to find, you have to find three, um, three propositions there. I got, I got started from the table. Close. I got it from the table. No prep. We need prepositions. Three prepositions. I got. That was a, that was a, gesture hint. I got up. Right. I got up from the table and started to clean off the dishes. I did the dishes to put everything away. Clean off is okay. I think clean up works better. I'm thinking clean up. Put everything away. Got up, clean up, away. Up, up, away. Up, up, away. Back. I put everything back. Put back is fine too. So let's let's look at this, okay? I got up from the table. 
usually when you think of get up, you think about what you do after sleeping, right? We did that the first one. I got up at six o'clock. But get up means to stand. Technically, that's what get up means. So I got up from the table and I started to clean up. Clean up. Clean up. Again, clean completely. Clean up the room. Clean up the table. Um, all right, fly. That's a good question. The difference between clean up and clean out is this. You clean out a space. I, I cleaned out the closet. I cleaned out my drawer. I cleaned out the trunk of the car. So I cleaned out the attic. Clean out means to clean a space and remove everything from that space. When you clean out the closet, there's nothing left in the closet usually, usually. Okay? If I say I'm going to clean out the garage, I'm going to take everything out of the garage. But clean up a place means to clean that place completely. And also, clean out needs a direct object. What did you do yesterday, Michael? I cleaned out. What did you do yesterday, Michael? I cleaned out the garage. Okay, so clean out needs a direct object. Clean up does not. What did you do yesterday, Michael? I cleaned up. Cool. All right, that's clean up. I did the dishes and then put everything away or put everything back. All right. So you put something away or put something back means return that thing to the original place or to the proper place where it usually goes, right? So when I'm done with my pen, I put it away into my pen holder. You can't see my pen holder. It's over there. I put it away, okay? I always tell the dogs, when you're done with your bones, please put your bones away. They never listen to me. Um, after going camping, after going camping, I cleaned up my car. Right, exactly. So, one more time to be clear. Number nine, I got up from the table and started to clean up. I did the dishes and put everything away or put everything back. Cool. By the way, if you want to, oh, where is it? If you want to download this document, um, you can do that here. Okay, I put this in the comments. You can go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. It's a free download. You can download this document and you can download the uh, document for every one of these YouTube live lessons. It's a free download. All you do is you put your name and your email address. And when you do that, you'll also get my free weekly newsletter. Comes out every weekend. Check that out. All right. Um, after going camping, I cleaned up my car. Awesome. All right. So that's number nine. Oh my God. Time is running out. <clears throat> Let's go to number 10. Here's number 10. After breakfast, I checked hmm, the weather forecast on TV and got dressed. How about got off from like I already sent? Would you take a look? How about got off from like what I already sent? 
Get off means I left the table. No, sorry. I got up. Get up means to stand up. Get up means stand up. Um, check out. Right, I check out. Check out the forecast. Check out the forecast. Now, you might know check out. Check out is like uh, I left the hotel, right? You have to check out by 10 a.m. But check out also means to uh, look at something because you want to learn something, right? Hey, check out my new glasses. Oh, can I check them out? Oh, they're cool, man. They're cool. I think so. Yeah, yes. Check out. I checked out the weather forecast. Um, in the morning, how do you check out the weather forecast? Do you check out the weather forecast on your phone? Or do you check out the weather forecast on your um on your TV. I check out the weather forecast on my phone. Oh, there she is. Check out. Check out means verify. That's right. Check out means investigate. See what it's like. Check out means to see what it is like on my phone. I check it out on my phone. See what it's like. You want to see what it is like. Um, if you go to a store, you can tell the shopkeeper, hey, can I check out that camera? Or can I check out this pen? Um, look it up. When you look up something, uh, look up means, we usually use look something up means to get information about that. Right? Uh, you look up a word in the dictionary. Poor can, internet connection in Uzbekistan. Sorry. Hang in there. Ka san. Uh, in the newspaper. Check out the weather forecast on my phone. So, check out means to examine something or to look at something. But look up means to... Um, Look up means to go to a resource to find information. I hope that I hope that makes sense. All right. Let's go. Next. <gasps> Time is running out. It took me half a half hour to get ready and then I headed at 7:45. All right, good. Check out the weather forecast on my phone and TV. Out. Admire. Admire? Sorry. Not quite what do you mean. I headed out. Headed out. Some people say out, on, over. What do you think? Okay. Head out. Out. Head out. Number 11 is head out. Head out means to leave. Head out means to leave. You can also use head to if you mention the place. I headed to my office. I headed to the station. But I headed out means to leave the house or to, to leave a place. Okay. What time, usually, what time do you head out in the morning? What time do you head out in the morning? I'm curious. What time do you head out in the morning? Mm -hmm. You can head over to a place. That's right. But in this case, because we have at 745, we need head out. I head out, David heads out at the same time, 7.45, head out. I headed out at 7 o'clock. I head out at 7.45, same, same. I usually head out at 7.30. All right, good. Good, 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 good. Let's go to number 12. 
I got on the subway, and then I got、mm. at Grand Central Station. Ah,、uh, look up to means admire. Look up to means admire. Now I know what you mean. I head out at eight. Thank you, Mika. Fly me to the moon. I don't know. That's your, th- that's your theme song. All right. I got the subway and then got at Grand Central Station. I got on, out of. Got on, off, on, off. Lolly, lolly, you're close. Chat is running further than video. I know, there's always, a, there's always a delay. I don't know why that is.、Um, let's talk about get on and get off. Ka san. Head out means to leave a place. I know there's a delay. All right, number 12. Get on the subway and then got off at Grand Central. If we're talking about public transportation and that public transportation, you can stand up, we use get on, get off. Get on the train, get off the train. Get on the bus, get off the bus. Get on the subway, get off the subway. Get on the airplane, get off the airplane.、Um, what? Get on the ferry, get off the ferry. Get on the ship, get off the ship. Get on the UFO, get off the UFO. If you're a space alien. If you cannot stand up like a car, you get in a car and get out of a car. Lolly, lolly, thank you. Get in the car, get out of the car. Get in the taxi, get out of the taxi. Get in the Uber, get out of the Uber. So you get in and out of a car, but you get on and off a bus. Get on the train, get off the train. Okay, because you can stand. All right. Fly me to the moon.、Um, all right, next. I dropped. The deli to pick up a cup of Joe. A cup of Joe. A cup of Joe is a slang word for coffee. I dropped by the deli to pick up a cup of Joe. Dropped by. Pascual says by, by. Drop off is correct, Maria, but not in this case. Nope. A deli is like a, a casual restaurant that only has food to go. If you know the, if you,、uh, Tigre, if you know、um, the sandwich shop Subway, that's like a chain, like a deli. Okay, drop by delicatessen. Thank, thank you. I dropped by the deli to pick up a cup of Joe. A cup of Joe means a cup of coffee. Drop by. You can also use drop in. That's fine. I dropped in. I dropped into the deli. I think I would say that. I dropped in the deli. I dropped into the deli. Drop into.、Um, but drop by is better. Drop by means to visit a place for a short amount of time. Okay. Wow. We only have a short amount of time. <gasps> I got 10 more pages to go. We're going to go quickly now because I don't want to run out of time.、Um, and then I got my office at 8 30. Again, this is a continuous story. And then I got my office at 8 30, number 14. Cold out meat. Not sure what that means. Cold out meat. I always drop by Starbucks. I got toward, that's close. 
Naoko says two. Da, 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 da. Number 14, I got my office at 8.30. What do you think? Think, think, think. Off. Sorry, David. I got two. Get to. Get to means arrive. Number 14, get to means arrive. I got to my office at 8.30. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Get two. We're going to go quickly now because I i don't want to run out of time. The boss is always standing... Eh, number 15. The boss is always standing blank to see if we come late. That's the boss by the door. The boss is always standing, standing, standing up close, standing up close, 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 stand by, stand by me, dun, 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 dun. stand by me, stand by, stand by me, stand by. Stand by, number 15. Stand by means to stand and wait. Stand by me. Dun, 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 dun. Stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Stand by. Sometimes, uh, when, when you're watching a program... Will the download be free after the live? Yes, you can download this document after the after this live lesson. All you have to do is go to myhappyenglish.com um, and you can download it. But but you have to you have to wait a couple of minutes, okay? Because I um, that's where to get it. Stand by. You can get this document um, if you go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. Now, it's free. You do have to enter your name and your email address. Okay? And then you can access the document. And you'll also get on the list for my weekly free English lessons by email. Okay? So, the boss is always standing by. Stand by means to stand and wait for something. Stand by. Stand and wait for something. All right. Oh, my God. Time is running out. Uh, I ran hmm, my emails. Number 16. Number 16. I ran huh, my emails. And then got uh, for the meeting. Kazan, yes, that's correct. I think you have a delay where you are. You're several slides behind. Um, I ran... Maurizio says through and got off. Close. That's very close. I ran my emails and then got for the meeting. I ran. This is tricky. See, not always easy. Mia, you're very close. Mika, thank you. I ran through my emails. Run through means to quickly review. Run through means to quickly review something. Maybe in the morning you run through the news headlines. I ran through my emails and then got ready for the meeting. Get ready for something means to prepare. Okay, so the answer for number 16 is 
I ran through my emails and then I got ready for the meeting, okay? And I'm sorry to, to go so quickly, but I, I want to make sure we get to this. Let's move to number 17. Don't give up. Never give up. Number 17. After my meeting, I popped Jack's office just to touch base him. I popped Jack's office just to touch base with him. I popped number 17 now, number 17. Popped in just to touch base with. Fly, I think you've got it with a typo though. Popped up, close. Yes, pop into. I popped in Jack's office or pop into. Usually, if you talk about the place, we use to pop into. I popped into Jack's office. Okay. I visited Jack's office for a short amount of time. I popped into Jack's office. Uh, suddenly, I popped into Jack's office. Okay. Just to touch base with him. Touch base with him. Contact him. Communicate with him. Okay, so I popped into 17. I popped into Jack's office just to touch base with him. Uh, Tigre, you can say I popped in Jack's office. However, um, usually when we use pop in or in, we don't mention the place. Oh, there's a nice deli. I think I'll pop in there. Sorry. There's a nice deli. I think I'll pop in. Or I'll be home all day tomorrow. Why don't you pop in? I'll be in my office all day. Why don't you pop in? Anytime. Right? I didn't mention that, but pop into Jack's office. I'll be home all day. Why don't you pop into the house? Like drop into, exactly. You got it. I popped in to touch base with him. Maurizio, thank you. Good. All right, good. A couple of more pages to go. That's a typing error. Let's skip 18. Sorry. Ever, we have to go to 19. Sorry, I'll fix 18 before. That's why I don't upload this first. Ever since number 19. Sorry, 18 had a typing mistake. Ever since Jack took over the marketing department, sales have been ramping, ramping, ramping up. On the way home, I sometimes pop into cafe. Ramping up, ramping up, ramp up means to increase, ramping up, all right, good, ramp up, so ramp up, number 20, page 20, the new Instagram has really been taking, the new Instagram page has been taking Kasan, I listen to you, but you're, you're two slides behind. The new Instagram page has been really taking, taking, it's successful, it's successful, it's successful. Taking off. Maurizio, got it. Fly, got it. Taking off. When an airplane takes off, it's successfully flying. So if your business is taking off, it means you're being, you're doing successful. Down because TikTok. Uh oh. Listen, uh, take off. Now go take off. 
Take off means to be successful. That's page 20. Take off. Around. No, take off. All right. 21. 21. And I'm sorry if I'm going too fast, but we're, up, we're out of time. I want to make sure we get everything done. Um, we had to take blank another person to help us. This means hire somebody, hire, hire new staff, get new staff. We had to take another person to help us. Take round. Nope. Nope. Take in. Daniela, good, good try. Kasan, good try. Tigre, good time. Uh, take on. Take on another person. Take on someone. When, when you take on someone, you get new staff in your, in your company. So take on another person means to hire another person. Take on. You can take somebody out, Maria, but that has a different meaning. Okay, if I take somebody out, it's like I take them on a date. But take on another person to help us. All right, two more pages. Um, number 22, social media is a great way to drum blank new business. And it's the top way to get blank these days. Aside, sorry, not drum aside. A seat says up. Number 22, number 22, number 22. Maurizio says up. Drum, drum blank new business means to increase your business. So drum up. So we need to drum up business. This is um, a phrasal verb that's often used in the office. You want to drum up business. Drum up sales means get new sales, get new customers. Drum up business means get new customers. And it's the top way to get ahead these days. Get ahead these days. Social media is a great way to drum up new business, drum up new business, and the top way to get ahead these days. Get ahead means be successful. I know, it's very quick. Sorry, we're out of time. Last page. Number 23. I had some ideas that I wanted to run Jack. He said he would get blank to me about them tomorrow. I had some ideas that I wanted to run uh, Jack. He said he would get uh, to me about them tomorrow. Kasan, good. Run by Jack. You run something by somebody. Run something by somebody. If you have an idea and you want to get someone's feedback, you want to get someone's opinion about your idea, you can say, listen, I have an idea. Can I run it by you? Run something by somebody. All right, good. He said he would get back to me about them tomorrow. Get back to me. Get back, stand by. Can't st um, Kasan, stand means tolerate, not stand by, but thank you. He would get back to me about them tomorrow, okay? So get back to somebody means reply to them. Cool? Oh, my God. So...
if you want to get this document, there's also a link when when this live uh, lesson is over, there'll be there'll be a link in the video. Uh, but you can go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. It's a free download. And uh, you can download that for free. And you'll also get my weekly uh, lessons in your email. All right. That, my friends, brings us to the end of today's live English lesson. Thank you so much uh, for studying with me. Thank you so much. Uh, for the tips that you sent. I really appreciate that. I appreciate your good examples. I will be back um, here uh, on YouTube Live next week at this very same time. Uh, the next live English lesson this week will be, uh, where are we? Today's Monday. Tomorrow morning early morning hello talk tomorrow at this time clubhouse and then live on instagram friday at this time earlier time i'll post all that don't worry if you don't remember it all right see you next time thank you so much for studying with me i really really appreciate that uh keep in mind that learning another language is not always easy but it's not impossible, and I am here to help you on your journey. Thank you so much for coming to my live English lesson today. Have a great day. See you next time.